Kim Jong-un believes a robust nuclear arsenal represents power and he'll do just about anything to build it up. The North Korean leader has grown his military despite the country being one of the most impoverished places in the world and positioned himself to stay in power for decades to come. So how does Kim do it? North Korea needs a lot of money to fund a nuclear weapons program that Kim Jong-un believes will put the country on an equal footing with global powers. Kim's regime spends hundreds of millions of dollars on missile spin testing at a blazing pace. He's also shut out aid from international agencies that want to help feed his people. And he rejected the idea of financial rewards from major democracies in exchange for winding down his atomic ambitions. So where's he getting the money? So the fact that Kim Jong-un has been opening new revenue streams right now is, is really not aberrant behavior for North Korea. Right now would be an opportunity for Kim Jong-un to not only get the supply, the food, the oil that he needs, but to also join forces with Putin right now and to show that they're both resistant to the U.S.-led effort to bring peace and to restore um, international cooperation and, and law-abiding countries um, to remain cohesive. The U.S. has said the Kremlin wants to buy millions of rockets and artillery shells, of which North Korea has in abundance. Russia has priced the cost of its 152mm artillery shells at about $800 each, an analysis showed. A major deal could be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. It's also not the first time the two neighboring countries have worked together. In late 2022, Russia and North Korea restored a rail link to boost trade. It had been suspended for nearly three years due to the pandemic. Satellite images show trains crossing from Russia into North Korea and stopping at a freight handling station. It's difficult to quantify how much trade is going on between Russia and North Korea, but Bloomberg sources say Russian sugar made its way into North Korea in recent months, as has grain. Russia has said it shipped about 1,300 tons of wheat flour in May. Russia has also resumed sending oil to the DPRK for the first time since 2020. North Korea's economy is forecast to grow by 1% in 2023. North Korea releases no official statistics on the size of its overall economy and tries to hide trade and revenue streams. But there are signs that international activity is picking up, and it also includes China, one of North Korea's main benefactors for years. We're seeing increased uh, Chinese exports to North Korea, uh, products in the range of soybean oil, tobacco, and also some medicine too. And its activities are violating sanctions. Between January and August of 2022, deliveries of refined petroleum products to oil facilities in Nampo exceeded the 500,000 barrel yearly amount of imports allowed. The ship to ship transfers, uh, you know, putting different call signs to, to confuse um, international um, uh, investigators, their dependence on cryptocurrency. And we've seen a spike in, in just the dependence. In the past five years, North Korea has, has stolen over $3 billion of cryptocurrencies. And that is actually funding more than half of the country's missile program. So it's a very reliable insurance policy for Kim and his survival. The other long-term goal that the Kim regime, that's Kim, his father, his grandfather have all had, is, is to actually bring the two Koreas under reunification, under Kim Jong-un or under the North Korean system. And the more that he can weaken uh, the U.S. and the South Korean and also the, um, the trilateral resolve to actually go at the heart of this problem, there's going to be much more, I think, problems for us to handle.